And now we have the second part of our discussion on image formation with lenses. We have lenses part 2. For a convex lens, also known as a converging lens, the effective focal point of the lens is behind the lens. And since we're talking about lens, lenses use refracted light to form images, particularly intersecting refracted light, which is behind the lens. If the effective focal lens, focal point is behind the lens, that means the focal length is positive. So for a convex lens or converging lens, the focal length F is positive and since F is equal to R over 2, half of the radius of curvature, if F is positive, R is also positive. So convex lens, automatically R is positive and F is positive. Convex lens or converging lens, converging lens, meaning the tendency of the lens is to focus light towards the focal point, particularly the effective focal point. Light that are parallel to the center line when it strikes the lens, the lens will focus the light towards the effective focal point. Now, a lens has two center points and two focal points, particularly when it comes to the ray diagram. C1, first center point. C2, second center point. F1, first focal point. F2, second focal point. And... For a converging lens, the locations of the focal points are as follows. F2 is the effective focal point, And since F is positive, which means the effective focal point is behind the lens. So F2 is behind the lens. And F1 is on the other side of the lens. F1 is in front of the lens. F1 is same distance from the lens as F2. C1, the first center point, is on the same side as F2. Behind the lens. And C2, the second focal point, is on the same side as F1 in front of the lens. And C2 is same distance from the lens as C1. Any light ray that is parallel to the center line, when it strikes the lens, the lens will focus the light towards the effective focal point, F2. Any light ray directed towards the first focal point, F1, when the light strikes the lens, the lens will make the light, the light ray, the light ray becomes parallel to the center line, the light ray becomes horizontal. Any light ray directed towards the midpoint of the lens, will simply pass through and change. On the other hand, for a concave lens, also known as a diverging lens, the effective focal point of the lens is in front of the lens. Thus, F is negative and R is also Negative. So the focal length is negative. The same goes for the radius of curvature. R is negative. F is negative. This time, we have this lens, 
This is a concave lens. As you can see, the surface facing the front of the lens is concave as opposed to a convex lens. The surface of the lens facing the front of the lens. This surface is convex. For, for a convex lens, the position of the focal points and center points are reversed. For a concave lens, F2 and C1 are now in front of the lens whereas F1 and C2 are behind the lens. And you have a diverging lens. Any light ray that is parallel to the center line when it strikes the lens, when it passes through the lens, it is focused away from F2, away from the, fo the effective focal point. Thus, you have a diverging lens. Any light ray that is directed towards the first focal point, towards F1, when it passes through the lens, the light ray becomes horizontal, parallel to the center line. And any light ray directed towards the midpoint of the lens will simply pass through the lens and change. Just like with mirrors, we can use ray diagram to analyze the optical system and determine the image location and orientation. Regardless of whether you have a concave lens or a convex lens, we can use the tendency or the behavior of the lens in refracting the light rays. We can use the behavior of the lens to do ray diagram analysis and thus determine the image location and orientation. And here are a couple of figures showing how ray diagram is used to determine the image location and orientation for lenses. So here we have a convex lens and here we have a concave lens. First, let's have the convex lens. So you have a convex lens or converging lens. You have the center line on which you have F2, C1, F1, and C2. We place an object in front of the lens. Each point on the object may be considered as a light source. Let's look at the top point. As a light source, the top point will emit light in all directions. We look at two light rays. One light ray is horizontal, parallel to the center line. When it strikes the lens, the lens will focus the light towards the effective focal point, F2. The second light ray is directed towards F1. When it strikes the lens, the lens will focus it or refract it to become horizontal. The light ray will become horizontal parallel to the center line. So we have two light, ray, light rays, two refracted light rays that is. One refracted light ray, another refracted light ray. They intersect at this point. There is an image formed at this point. Do the same thing for each point on the object and we will be able to form the image. So you have an image located here. On the same side as the refracted light, you have a real image. Compared to the object, the image is inverted, so you have an inverted real image. On the other hand, let's see for the 
let's have an example rather for the concave lens. You have a concave lens, you have the center point, you have F2, C1 in front of the lens, and you have F1 and C2 behind the lens. You have a diverging lens. We put an object in front of the lens, considering the top point of the object. The top point is considered as a light source, so it emits light in all directions. We consider two light rays. One light ray is horizontal, parallel to the center line. After it passes through the lens, the lens will focus it away from the effective focal point, away from F2. You have another light ray directed towards F1. When it strikes the lens, the light ray becomes horizontal, parallel to the center line. So we have two refracted light rays. You have one refracted light ray, another refracted light ray. They do not intersect, meaning no image on this side of the lens. If we trace back the refracted light rays, the trace back line will intersect at this point. There is an image formed at this point. Do the same thing for each point on the object. You will be able to form the image. You have, a, you have an image formed in front of the lens. The refracted light is behind the lens, which means the image formed is a virtual image. Comparing the image with the object, the image is upright or erect. You have an erect virtual image. For a more complete picture on lenses, you might want to take a look into the concept of the lens maker's equation. So, you might want to consider this as reading assignment. And that's it for our discussion on lenses. So that's it for now. In the next video, we'll continue our discussion on optics. We'll take a look at a few examples. So again, that's it for now. And thank you for watching.